And if you like the video or any other content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to 500, so subscribe if you like the content. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so we're going to go over the shield host attachment. So I posted on the community just asking what you guys would prefer first, shield host or orc. Shield host one by one vote. So we do have the shield host detachment here. This will be an all infantry list. I still like the idea of an all infantry list. I think the shield host is the best attachment to allow all infantry. You can actually get some better use out of an all infantry list with the detachment rule. Detachment rule will help keep opponents on their toes. And, it, and they may also choose not to get closer with some of their shooting units just to get better sight lines. They may stay back because they don't want you to pop the martial mastery and then charge into them. And holding the threat of a big melee turn can be very powerful. And then an all infantry list, like I said, benefits from the martial mastery the most. And martial mastery is in the melee phase, so using tanks and stuff like that, you're not going to get as much benefit out of the big one turn of Golden Wa. Alright, so let's go over the actual shield host list. I'm going to name this one the Golden Wa, because it just reminds me of the orc turn. It is 2,000 points exactly. We'll start with the characters. I have a blade champion with the pen off the specs enhancement, and that just allows his unit to ignore cover. And then I have another blade champion, no enhancements on him. Shield captain on a Dawn Eagle jet bike with the Castellan's mark, just to allow him to redeploy two units after the first turn roll. So that's quite powerful, and you usually want to have that on at least one of your captain units. Four custodian guard, three of them have spears, one has the Vexilla just for the extra OC. I have two units of five Terminators, all of them have the spears. Then I have two units of Wardens, five in each unit. They all have spears and a Vexilla in their group as well. I have four Prosecutors and four Witch Seekers. For my allied units, I have Kyriodraxis and the Calidus Assassin. I also wanted to make this list with no Forge World. All the actual data sheets in the codec, I didn't use any of the Forge World units. I did use some of the Imperial Allied units, but I didn't use any of the Forge World. So we'll just go over the Martial Mastery a little bit here. You know, all it really does is just for one battle round, you have crits on fives and an extra AP on your melee weapons. So this really helps a infantry list. This won't help the tanks or the land raiders do any more damage in melee. Yes, you can get some crit flies on them, but it's more helpful on your big infantry units. So next, we're going to go over a little bit of the synergy with this list and the detachment. So sadly to say, other than having a lot of infantry for the martial mastery phase, there's not a lot you can do really for this with list building. Castellan's Mark is an amazing enhancement. It's the best enhancement in the detachment. It's the only reason I bring a shield captain. So this allows us to deploy both the blade champion units right on the line. Redeploy two units after the first turn roll is very powerful. After knowing who goes first, you can either hide those two blade champion units if you go second. But if you know you're going first, you can take two more units to put them on the line as well. Panopta specs, this is just a simple filler. It's better on a Terminator Captain so you can get your ignore covers on all your Terminator shots, but you do need a Shield Captain for the Castellan's Mark. You can't put that on a Blade Champion. You can put the Panopta specs on a Blade Champion. I just threw that in for an extra five points, just something to fill the list. Now we'll go over these strategies and just how they're going to interact with this list. Still not a lot of stuff you can interact. I did take a few units because some of these strategies, but I didn't take units specifically for these stratagems. First we have Arcane Genetic Alchemy. It is the only battle tactic in the detachment. It is good since you can wait until the mortal wounds are allocated to the unit. It's good against grenades, tank shocks, and other mortal wounds abilities, but it's not worth bringing a shield captain for. And just to put him with the wardens, I would rather bring another blade champion instead of a shield captain just for this Arcane Genetic Alchemy. And Arcane Genetic Alchemy is only one CP now. That's a little better than the old one, but the old one was minus one damage for two CP, and that one was a lot stronger. Then we have Avenge the Fallen, and this one is a very, very situational stratagem. For one CP, it's potential a few more attacks, because all it is is plus one attack if your unit is below starting strength, and plus two attacks if your unit is below half strength. And our units are so small now, you can only take them in units of five. Your Terminators, you can't get them up in a unit of six, put them with a Captain, brings them up by one. You're not really going to spend the one CP for a few more attacks, it's just not worth it. Unwavering Sentinels. This is our old fight first stratagem. 
Fight First was impressive. You know, I can't I can't deny that. It was also worth building a hard hitting melee list around. It was a detachment defining stratagem. Sometimes you would even pick custodian guard over wardens because their damage potential on objectives. Now for minus one to hit on objective we control for one CP, it's not worth building around that. That's just ooh. I have some extra CP left. I don't want to take as much damage in this melee phase. Maybe I'll pop this and hope for the best. But there's so many reroll hit rolls in the game now that this really isn't going to make a big difference in the long run of a game. All right, so these last three stratagems do have a little more potential with my list. But once again, I really didn't build the list around the stratagems like I do with the Talons of the Emperor Detachment. Multi-potentiality is a fantastic stratagem. Fall back, shoot, and charge for one CP. You can't go wrong with that. It's great for your big Terminator bricks. We used to have to use a enhancement in the index to be able to fall back and charge, but now for one CP, we can use that. So it's a great stratagem. It's great on your Terminators. So you don't have to worry about your Terminators getting stuck in combat or something like that. It is a great stratagem, but is not a battle tactic. So you can't use it for free and you can't double up on it. We also have Vigilance Eternal, and this is sticky objectives, but you can only use it on battle line units, and Custodian Guard are the only battle line units we have. Unless you're playing Null Maidens, you can use the Prosecutors, but there's no Vigilance Eternal in Null Maidens. With no protection from devastating wounds, Custodian Guard really lost a lot of their staying power. Now for 45 points, they're just not really worth flooding the board with them. You want to have one unit for Draxus, but they're not nearly as tough and useful compared to a Warden unit. Unit now. One CP might be worth using on the Draxus and Custodian Guard unit just for sticking some objectives as you run around with Draxus. And then finally, Archaeotech Munitions. It's another great stratagem. It's one CP to gain sustained or lethal on your ranged weapons in the shooting phase. This stratagem, as well as the fallback and charge stratagem, are the reasons I took a second unit of five Terminators. But with it not being a battle tactic, we can't abuse it. We can't use it on both these units. I can't use it for free, but I decided to bring a second full break of Terminators. I was thinking of breaking them up into a three and a two just for some extra point scoring, but with the Caladus Assassin and the Witch Seekers, I do think I have some extra scoring, so I did decide to take a second big brick of Terminators. And then in list list, I do like to have some job categories just so I can have an idea of what I'm going to be doing with the list when I play it at the table. So I usually have them kind of broke up into three different categories. I have primary. These units are used to gain and hold and get as many primary points as possible. Secondary units, units used to gain secondary scoring and disrupting the scoring potential of the opponent's army. And then last, we have the attack units. These are units used to target the opponent's most dangerous damage dealers, as well as target the opponent's primary scoring, just to try to take as many points away from the opponent as possible primary units first i have the two blade champion units these are two very fast and tough units to gain early primary control as soon as possible the once per game four up funeral pain can help keep these units gaining primary points all game long they're tough as nails they minus one to wound if you're shooting at them or attacking them with something higher than their toughness so these guys can stay around for a lot of the game then we have the prosecutors once again just a cheap 40 point unit to hold my own objective and then i have draxus with the four custodian guard these are kind of a jack of all trade unit i can use them to hold on to the home objective if the prosecutors won't be enough to hold on to it for the first few turns or they can be part of the secondary scoring units running around just doing some secondary damage, messing around with the opponent's army. Then we have the secondary units. I do believe the secondary scoring will be quite strong in this list. We have the shield captain on the Dawn Eagle jet bike. He is just for having the Castellan's mark, but he's also a fast unit to grab early secondary points. He can also harass some enemy light infantry. I needed the shield captain for the Castellan's mark. Bike captain seems the most useful for this list and this detachment just for what I want him to do. I have the Witch Seekers, and these are another unit used to gain early secondaries like Aerial Denial, Extend Battle Lines, without having to put my Wardens out in those firing lines turn one. Then we have the Calidus Assassin. This is a great unit for behind enemy lines or investigate signals. And then since you can pick her up at the end of the opponent's turn, she's great for going up and down doing secondaries. She can also vect an opponent's battle tactic, adding one to the CP cost. I usually will try to target the most important battle tactic that can harm my overall game plan. If not, you might as well target CP reroll. People are always using CP reroll, so it's a good one to hit. Last, we have our attack unit. Two units of five Terminators. These are going to be my big attack units. These will be the units I use to target the opponent's most important units. You can reroll your wounds against characters, monsters, and vehicles. So that's usually the opponent's most important units. One, if not both of these, I'll probably start in 
deep strike just for that rapid ingress threat. I love having a rapid ingress threat. Golden Light will allow me to drop down, deal with the threat, pick them back up, and then go somewhere else. You can only do that once per game, but the good thing is now you don't have to drop them down right away. You can pick them up and hold on to them for a few turns if you need to. You still have to follow the reserve rules so you can't hold on to them for turn five. So that's a big buff. I do enjoy being able to hold these now to keep that looming threat of maybe another rapid ingress down on them. This unit, I'll be using Archaeotech munitions as much as possible. Draxus is still a good target for it, but if I'm shooting into a bigger unit, the amount of attacks I get with the Terminators will probably get me a little more damage with sustained or lethal. Once again, it's a shame we can't use this twice per turn, but it will be an important tool for this unit. Now for the final thoughts on this list and this detachment. This list, it is harder to make it into combat for the martial mastery phase than if you're using some Venetari or some jet bikes, but there's a lot more staying power if your wardens and your terminators. I still don't like the turn one martial mastery. Orcs get a turn one wa too, but they could get advance and charge. I would take advance and charge over one of the exploding fives or the AP one. It'd be nice to have exploding fives and advance and charge or advance and charge and AP one. I would take some like that doesn't really get around the fact that we're still a slow movement six army really have to plan it right to get the most of this martial mastery turn and like i keep saying the more infantry you have in a shield host list the better chance you have into making into combat on that martial mastery turn Stratums could use some work, even if it's just making a few more of them battle tactic. None of them seem detachment to fighting anymore. Talons of the Emperor has a lot of these same strategies, or even equivalent to them. You have fallback and charge. There's a way to negate mortal wounds as well, but there's just better ones in here. The reactive movement. I'd rather the shooting one of Talons of the Emperor, the plus one to strength and AP. I like that one better on my Draxus unit because she already has sustained two on her psychic attacks. Do think that if some of these were more battle tactics, we could probably get some more use out of these stratagems and then build to list a little more towards these stratagems some. So in all infantry list, it will be a lot harder to play now. We have no protection from devastating wounds, so movement and unit placement will be key, as well as knowing when to use the martial mastery phase. We don't have any anti-tank in this list. We don't have any big ranged firepower. This will allow our opponent just to fill up the shooting lanes with all their big ranged firepower because they don't have to worry about us shooting back at them. So we do have to be careful of that. And our units will take a lot more damage moving up the board now, trying to get into melee. So I don't know how this is going to work still. The martial mastery phase is fun just to see all the big damage you can do. Talons of the Emperor still seems more powerful to me but I want to try this list and maybe this list will make me change my mind maybe somehow this list will turn out be amazing so that's my final thoughts on this list I'm going to play it on the channel sometime just so you guys see what a full power infantry list can look like without using any of the Vanatari or the bikes especially the bike the bikes just seem so over costed compared to bringing a warden or a terminator so that's my all infantry shield host attachment list I hope you guys enjoy it I'm going to try it a little bit on the channel I think in a future battle report coming up and like I always say thanks for watching thanks for stopping by